This presentation describes the indications, technique, and a case report for an iliopsoas tendon release following total hip arthroplasty. Total hip replacements are one of the most utilized procedures in our aging population today. Total hip replacements have demonstrated outcomes which are highly successful. However, although the complication rates are very low, complications do occur. Iliopsoas impingement is one cause for persistent pain following a total hip replacement. Studies have suggested that between 1 and 5% of persistent pain following hip replacement can be attributed to iliopsoas tendon impingement. The iliopsoas is a continuation of the iliacus and psoas muscles inserted as a common tendon onto the anterior medial aspect of the lesser trochanter. Major actions include flexion of the hip and a minor contribution to external rotation. Patients presenting postoperatively with iliopsoas tendon impingement will complain of groin pain that is exacerbated by flexion activities such as stair climbing or by attempting to rise from a seated position. When considering iliopsoas tendon impingement, it is important to rule out other differentials such as infection, hardware loosening, and malalignment. To understand the pathophysiology of the underlying pain, it may be warranted to obtain imaging including radiographs, CT, and MRI. Conservative measures, including injections of the psoas tendon at the level of the joint, often provide temporary relief of the patient's pain. Injections are somewhat predictive of surgical success and thereby serve as both a diagnostic and therapeutic intervention. Patients who obtain relief from injections but fail to have long-term benefit may benefit from arthroscopic release. In a study by Jarosh et al., 35 patients underwent iliopsoas release following total hip replacement. On post-op day one, 32 of the 35 patients stated their preoperative pain had disappeared. At six weeks follow-up, 34 of the 35 patients had no residual pain and no weakness in hip flexion from 0 to 70 degrees. A 2002 article by Heaton and Dorr described the results of five patients with chronic groin pain following total hip replacement treated with iliopsoas release. At six to eight weeks, all of the patients had no limitations in flexion and all had significant pain reduction from preoperative levels. Indications for surgical release of the iliopsoas tendon include persistent pain after a total hip replacement when conservative measures of treatment have failed. If postoperative pain is apparent, it may be warranted to obtain labs including ESR and CRP. Ordering a bone scan and possibly aspirating the joint may also be of use. Additional indications for surgical release of the iliopsoas tendon include anterior overhang of the acetabular component of the total hip replacement having been ruled out by CT imaging. Patients presenting with anterior overhang are recommended to have acetabular revision as opposed to tendon release. Here we present a 65-year-old female who presented to the office with persistent left hip pain following total hip replacement three months ago. Two prior injections offered minimal relief at an outside institution. The two prior injections provided good but very short-lived relief of approximately two to three days. The patient's physical exam was notable for a positive straight leg test and positive flexion internal rotation impingement sign. Pain was noted especially with resisted hip flexion at 90 degrees. Following a third injection in the office, the patient's pain had decreased three weeks later. The risks and benefits for surgery were discussed and the patient decided to move forward with an iliopsoas tendon release. General anesthesia was administered with a lumbar plexus block. The left hip was not placed into traction and fluoroscopic guidance was used for portal placement. The site was draped in a sterile fashion. Standard anterior lateral and anterior portals were used to enter the joint space as demonstrated here. The modified anterior portal labeled MA, is typically not used and is used for orientation of the other portals. Visualization of the hip joint was obtained and expected scarring was noted. Here, scarring around the prosthetic implant is noted. Debridement of the capsular tissue was performed. This allows for clear visualization along the acetabular rim.
The dissection is maintained along the bone to avoid medial soft tissues including the neurovascular bundle. The tendon was identified impinging over the anterior rim. A beaver blade was used to release the tendon from the anterior aspect of the hip joint as demonstrated here. Electrocautery can also be used. At this level of the iliopsoas muscle tendon complex, the tendon compromises approximately 50% of the diameter. Release of the tendon is associated with lengthening and not with a full release of the muscle tendon complex. We can now visualize the tendon released in the joint space devoid of scar tissue. Passive motion of the hip on the operating room table in flexion extension testing demonstrated no significant impingement. Our second patient was a 49-year-old female who presented with persistent left hip pain following total hip replacement. Physical therapy offered minimal relief and an in-office injection offered one day of pain relief to the patient. The patient's physical exam was notable for a positive straight leg test and pain on left hip flexion. General anesthesia was administered with a lumbar plexus block. Fluoroscopic guidance was used for portal placement. As previously noted, standard anterior and anterior lateral portals were used to enter the joint space. Visualization of the hip joint was obtained and expected scarring was noted. Upon entering the joint space, the bribement of the capsular tissue was performed and clear visualization of the tendinous complex was obtained. Here we demonstrate the use of electrocautery in the release of the iliopsoas tendon complex. As previously mentioned, release of the tendon is associated with lengthening and not a full release of the tendon complex. Upon release, passive motion of the hip on the operating room table in flexion extension testing demonstrated no significant impingement. Following surgical release, it is important to control pain and initiate physical therapy. Postoperatively, passive range of motion is initiated within the first week and active hip flexion strengthening exercises are delayed for three months. Partial weight bearing with crutches is initiated for two weeks. It is also important to note that strength improves up to one year after surgery. Rates of recurrence in patients undergoing tendon release remain low. However, only small case series have been published to date. Although conservative measures remain unlikely to provide adequate relief for patients, it is important to exhaust these options before considering surgical intervention. In closing, iliopsoas tendon impingement is an important etiology in patients suffering from persistent hip pain after total hip replacement. In the context of the proper clinical exam and findings, an iliopsoas tendon release may be warranted and will offer most patients a good outcome.